In today's video, we're going to walk through a CSS setup for a mobile-first approach. This approach is crucial for responsive design, ensuring that your website looks great on mobile devices first, and then progressively enhances the layout for larger screens. Let's break down the setup and understand how it works. We begin by importing two essential style sheets in the CSS file. The first import is for the Bentham and Roboto fonts, which give us a nice selection of typography for the website. The Roboto font is a sans serif font, while Bentham is a serif font, and they are loaded from Google Fonts. The second import is for the Boxicons library, which provides a collection of icons we can use throughout the project. This is loaded from a CDN, making it easy to add icons without having to download them. Now, let's take a look at the global styles. The universal selector is used to reset padding, margin, and box sizing. This ensures consistent spacing and alignment across all elements, preventing any unexpected gaps or padding. By setting box sizing to border box, we include padding and borders in the total width and height of an element, making it easier to manage layouts. Additionally, list style type and text decoration are removed from all elements, which ensures that no unwanted bullet points or underlines appear. Next, we have the HTML tag. The scroll behavior property is set to smooth, which gives a smooth scrolling effect when users click on anchor links. The height is set to WebKit fill available, which makes the HTML tag fill the available height of the viewport. This is important for maintaining a consistent layout. Moving on to the body tag, the font family is set to Roboto, ensuring a clean, modern look with good readability. The font size is set to 16px, which is a standard size for body text, and the font weight is 400 for regular text. The color is set to 5e, which is a muted, dark shade of blue, and the background color is set to 0b a deep blue, providing a dark theme for the page. Additionally, when the body has the class Overflow Hidden, the Overflow property is set to Hidden, preventing any scrolling, which might be useful for specific layouts or animations. The main tag has Overflow set to Hidden, which ensures that any content spilling outside the boundaries of the main section will be hidden from view, providing a clean layout. For the Anchor tag and Button tag, we remove the default styles, like borders and outlines, and set cursor to pointer, making these elements clickable. The user select property is set to none to prevent text selection, and background and box shadow are removed for a clean, minimal look. When it comes to images and videos, we ensure that both elements are responsive. The display is set to block to remove any unwanted space beneath them, and max width is set to 100%, which ensures that they scale down to fit the container they're in while maintaining their aspect ratio. The object fit property is set to cover, ensuring that the content fills the element's box while maintaining the aspect ratio, even when it needs to crop. For headings, we set the font family to Bentham, giving them a more classic serif look for contrast with the body text. The container class is used to wrap the main content. It has a max width of 1462px, which ensures that the content doesn't stretch too wide on larger screens, while the height is set to auto to accommodate varying content sizes. The margin is set to zero auto, which centers the container horizontally, and the padding of 24px is applied to the left and right sides for spacing. Now, let's move on to the media queries, which are crucial for implementing the mobile-first approach. The media queries are set up for different screen sizes, starting from 576px and going all the way up to 1400px. Since we are following a mobile-first approach, we don't need to define specific styles for mobile. The default styles apply to mobile, and as the screen size increases, we use media queries to add or adjust styles for larger devices. For example, at 576px, we might want to tweak the layout for landscape phones, such as adjusting margins or font sizes. At 768px for tablets, we might want to adjust the layout of the navigation bar or increase font sizes. At 992px for desktops, we can introduce larger containers or grid systems. At 1200px and 1400px, for large and extra large desktops, we can further refine the layout, adding more complex elements or adjusting spacing. By setting up these media queries, we ensure that the website is responsive and looks good on any device, from mobile phones to large desktops. And there you have it. We've gone through a mobile-first CSS setup that ensures your website is responsive and looks great on any device. If you found this helpful, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more web development tutorials. Keep building, and I'll see you in the next one.